What is going on guys? I'm back with another episode of a TV movie podcast. Today I have for you a Big Brother 25 live feed update. I think we're on either 16 or 17. But as we know, we get a new HOH. And it was Felicia. It was Felicia, man. And that was the last person I would have thought would win. Honestly, no disrespect to Felicia. I want to know what the competition was. But, you know, never underestimate old people. You know, as we know, Jerry, Jerry from season 10, he was he was given an HOH. But I think Felicia earned this HOH. So shout out to Felicia. And this is good news for Jared, Izzy, Corey, Sari, America. That side of the house seems to be in control now. So they're really running the show. And I'm not mad about it. This is like one of the first times I'm actually enjoying the people that are in power. But yeah, so Felicia won HOH and they're celebrating in the storage room. And then Jared's saying, yo, he's got a headache. Uh, his mom, Sari, Izzy's there. Sari's telling Jared, maybe drink some more water. Then they talk a little bit more about the game. And basically, they're basically discussing about potential nominees, what Felicia should do. And they're thinking that Felicia should put up either Cameron as a pawn or red but they're not really too sure about red because red is in the alliance but he's not he doesn't really know what the plan is for the week and the plan is for the week is to backdoor a sign and then when they talk about a sign a sign walks in and they gotta quickly change the subject and uh jerry really says yo my head hurts and uh the sign's like wait what it, it, and Jerry's like, I got a bad headache. And the sign's like, oh, it's because you're in love. And Jerry's like, what? No, man, I just got a bad headache. And so when a sign leaves, uh, Cerise's whole demeanor changed because she was all laughing and joking when the sign walks in. And then she, her demeanor changes. And she's like, man, that's, that's, that's the narrative they're pushing on you. Don't, don't listen to them. You're not in love with Blue because that's the person he's in love with. And, quote unquote and so you know that that whole interaction was funny to me because it was it just it just goes to show you like you know how crazy this game is like somebody can just walk into the it to, to, to a room and then you got to quickly adjust to your conversations you know you expect the unexpected right and so that was good gameplay by uh, Jared and Sari right there quickly changing the subject when a sign walked in and that's not the only time a sign walks in on them talking about him like they, they go to a different room to to talk more about the game and then Hassan keeps walking in and out and it, it, it's, it's just funny seeing Hassan kind of scramble and then when he finally decides to like stay in the room and talk to them he's just basically saying how dumb Riley was and how bad of a player she was and it's just being kind of disrespectful and I, I'm starting to see what they did it show in the episode where you know the when the episode it said how harsh it, uh, this veto speech was towards Riley, Hassan's veto speech towards Riley was, and we didn't really see that in the episode. But when I'm watching these live feeds and seeing the way Hassan's been talking about Riley, basically just kind of shitting on her, I'm like, ah, I see, I see, I see it now. You know, you you weren't a huge fan of Riley, were you? But the plan is to backdoor Hassan. They want to use Cameron as a pawn. I think they don't want to use Red as a pawn because Red doesn't know what the plan is for the week because Red wants Cameron gone. So and 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 he's still Professor Strong and he doesn't want Hassan gone right now. So Red is kind of out of the loop. But, you know, if they can't get rid of Hassan, Red is the next target. So I think Red might actually be a pawn and they might put Red and Cameron as a pawn and basically tell Red A hey, Hey, yo, gun for this veto or or whatever, right? And and Cameron's going, but really, it's gun for this veto, win the veto so we can back to our sign, you know what I'm saying? And then, um, that's not the only thing that happens. Um, when Corey walks into the storage room, I forgot to mention, Corey walks into the storage room, he's basically like, hey, um, what if we tell Hassan to not gun for the veto and basically be like, hey, basically be like, yo, this is an easy week. We don't really need to win the veto, right? And just trick him into not winning the veto so they can backdoor him. 
and that is what they're planning on doing. They kind of just laugh about it, and uh, and that's when a sign walks in again, you know, and that that's funny. <laughs> so uh, yeah, man, that's been it for live up for you updates. See you guys in the next video. Peace.